Welcome to Monte Carlo, the place where they have the millionaires' yachts, the casinos, the plush hotels, the jet setters. But it's going to be no holiday for Mike McCallum here as he defends his WBA middleweight title in what should be one of boxing's fights of the year against the Italian African Sambu Calambe. Calambe here, the only man ever to have beaten McCallum in 10 years of professional boxing. Well, they're calling him Patrizio, that's what all the Italian fans who've come to love Callum Bay are calling him Mike McCallum, the famed body snatcher, making his third defense of his middleweight crown. Two great technicians here. They're so wily, they're so crafty, the pair of them. And referee from Great Britain, in fact, one of Britain's very best, John Coyle. The announcement's being made in French to the crowd here in Monte Carlo who've paid good money to see this one. Callum Bay looking to get back in the big time. McCallum looking to stay in it. The starred Louis the Second Stadium, a splendid arena here. Indoor and outdoor facilities. They have uh, big football and athletics outdoors. The boxing and several other sports indoors. McCallum being introduced to the crowd. His record, 39 wins, 33 by knockout. And only one defeat against Callum Bay. There's Sambu Callum Bay's wife, Rosa. She calls him, nicknames him, Ali. That's how, uh, that's how highly she thinks of her husband as a boxer. Not too many similarities between Callum Bay and Ali in style, but, uh, well, they've both been top men in the trade. Thank you. Now. Ready when you are. First bell, it's due to go 12 rounds, and we expect something special here between these two veterans of the ring. McCallum showing no signs that he might be fading. Many people have tried to write him off. His last defense was last April against the man sitting beside me, uh, my co-commentator tonight, Commonwealth middleweight champion, Michael Watson. Uh, Michael, you know at first hand, how good is McCallum? He's an extremely, very, a very good technician. Technician, I'm sure he'd be up against this one. You know, it's his only blemish on his record, and you know he's going to go out there to produce this tonight. Well, they call him the body snatcher because he really can be a devastating body puncher. But Callum Bay has some very big wins indeed on his record. A former world champion himself broke into the big league when he beat Harold Graham for the European title in 1987. That was a shock at the time, and Graham was out on his feet in the last round. Colombo is a very awkward technician, you know, he uses the full perimeter of the round, he, he makes good use of the ring, he's always jabbing and moving, he's never stationary, and it's very hard to tag a man like Colombo. He's got a beautiful left jab, Colombo, he works behind his left hand. Calambe has got a good amount of speed as well. The last time these two met was in Pizarro in 1988 when Calambe was too quick, too slippery for McCallum, who some people said wasn't in the greatest of condition for that fight. And Calambe took the decision on all three judges' scorecards. McCallum trying to put that blemish on his record right here in Monte Carlo. McCollum is a very slow starter, he always takes time, he, he fills his opponent out, you know, works behind his left hand to create openings, but he, he has to step up the pace tonight, he can't let this point go. These really are two very, very clever technicians of the ring, real craftsmen, and that's why they've stayed around for so long at the top level. You look at fighters like these, these two guys, and you know what you've got to produce to become world champion. <laughs> Calambe's last world title fight ended in a traumatic 88-second defeat against the IBF champion Michael Nunn. That was in Las Vegas a couple of years back. But since then, he's won the European title, given it up again to concentrate on another world campaign. Very big fight indeed, this for Calambe. His last chance, really, to get back into the major league. Interesting first round, Michael. Yes, I think, I think it was a very, very even round by both fighters. 
Both working behind their jabs. Well, there is uh, Mike McCallum. He's the son of a lay preacher, originally from Jamaica, now based in New York. They used to call him uh, Mellow Mike. That was his first nickname. He's never been one of the glamour boys of boxing, but uh, when you look at the people he's beaten, uh, like Don Curry, like Mike Watson here, like Harold Graham, like Milton McCrory, well, it really is some record. Former world champion, too, at light middleweight. It really is a shame, Ian. You know, Mike, Mike has great all-around ability. You know, he only does what's necessary to, to win a fight. You know, he, he never wins devastatingly you know he, he, he's just a great technician it's, it's, it's a pity he's never had a chance to capitalize on you know the big names in boxing Callum Bay there coming forward and looking for the big right that's not really his style he likes to uh, suck his opponents in and then counter punch them Callum is coming forward but he's coming forward quite warily he doesn't want to make the mistake of uh, playing Callum Bay's game Callum Bay out of range a couple of times with the jab. Really is a, a bit of a chess match between the two of them. This is similar to the first encounter they had. You know, you had Callum Bay dancing around using the left hand, you know, making things very awkward for, um, for Mike. As I stated before, Mike, Mike is a very slow starter. I think when you fought uh, McCallum, you were told by Mickey Duff, your manager at the time, to keep McCallum on the move, make his legs, his old legs, so it was thought, uh, get tired in the later rounds, but it never happened, did it? Yes, the strategy, the strategy was for me to, you know, to keep with him, keep pressuring him, and hopefully in the later rounds he would die down, but, you know, he surprised us all as, he, as the rounds went on, he got stronger. He might know he's very, you know, he's a, he's a great fighter. He knows how to pace himself. He paces himself very well, and he doesn't throw shots unless, you know, unless he knows he's going to connect. Well, McCallum's having a good second round here. He's scored well with the jab and dug in some useful hooks to the body as well, and made Callum Bay miss a fair bit in this round, like just there. Mike is certainly warming to the task now. He, he's doubling up on his, he's feeling his way with the jab and working down to the body. Look at a clever technician McCallum is. He gets his gloves up as well, and those jabs from Callum Bay just hit the gloves. They were not scoring punches. Callum Bay just looks a little bemused at the moment. He's got such an extensive toolbox, this WBA middleweight champion. Mike is making things very difficult. His, his timing is his, his timing's perfect. His jabs connecting, beautiful hooks to the body. And this is where it's going to matter most. No doubt about it, that was McCallum's round after what was quite an even opening round. And I think that the uh, Jamaican McCallum will be well pleased with his work as he goes back to the corner there. Here's some of the action again from this uh, second round, Michael. Good body shot, that wasn't it? Very good. And now you know why this man has been avoided by all the top names in, in boxing. Well, third round, it's due to go 12, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it did go 12 either. Callum Bay, let me remind you, in the white trunks. Born in Zaire, but now living in Chiravare, Italy. And much loved by the Italian fans. He's a naturalized Italian, trained by Ennio Galeazzi. I think Mike should get in a little bit more, more, more close and work his left hand and get, get to the bodies. Get inside a, a little bit more. Just, just stay with him. There are more question marks in this fight over Callum Bay, really, than uh, McCallum. The question over Callum Bay is where, really is whether he is a world title level kind of fighter anymore after what happened against Michael Nunn in 1988. Well, this is the test of whether he is. 
He's acquitting himself pretty well so far, and he's doing rather better at the start of this third round, scoring more with the jab. It's, a, it's very unfortunate with Colombo against Michael Nunn. You know, it's very, it's very hard to judge him on that performance. You know, the first round knockout. You know, I've always uh, respected Colombo. He's a very, very good technician, and he's very awkward. He doesn't, he doesn't. It's very rare he gets tagged with a clean shot. I think McCallum's having a bit of problems uh, with that abdominal protector of his. He keeps uh, shifting it, I notice, every 30 seconds yes. or so. That's a good little burst again from McCallum. He's feel, McCallum's feeling his way with that left hand perfectly. Getting his time and getting his distance and following on the left and right hook. <laughs> McCullum rides a punch extremely well. You never see him taking a, a clean shot on the chin. He, you know, he moves his he moves his head a fraction away to take away the full effects of the punch. I think I'm right in saying he's only been down once in his career and that really was a bit of a flash knockdown against Harold Graham in That's the fifth correct. round. There's Callum Bay's wife watching at uh, ringside. I wonder what she's making of it so far. Looks a bit anxious. I would be if I was up against Martin Callum. Well, that was a closer round than the second, but I think, uh, again, McCallum did the better work there, Mike. Yes, I think, I think Mike stole that round. Eddie Futch is in the corner there for McCallum, the great Eddie Futch, one of the all-time great trainers of boxing. Among the 16 world champions he handled, Joe Frazier. As we just look at some of McCallum's work again in that third round, they come out for the fourth. McCallum in the black trunks, Callum Bay in white. And so far, McCallum setting about this business rather well of wiping out the only defeat on his professional record. I was watching Mike prepare in Las Vegas. I spoke to him for some time and he was telling me the only fight that he's really going to pick himself up on is this, this fight against Colombe. He really trained very hard hard in, um, in the gym, top-ranked gymnasium, and he was telling me that, you know, this is, a, this is one fight that he really wants to win. And two hooks to the head there from Ka McCallum, doubling up on the left hook. Then the jab. Back comes Callum, he's made to miss a couple of times. Better punch economy is coming from McCallum. He has a very good right hand to the right, right hook to the body and double left hand. Uh, those are his most dangerous punches, he's especially the left hook, the double left hook. Very effective. There was a time when people thought that McCallum would break into the big multi-million dollar purse league of the likes of Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran, particularly after he'd done a job on Don Curry, knocking him out in five rounds. If you look at the source, if you look at the fighters that McCullum's beaten, Milton McCrory, Don Curry, he's beaten myself, you know, now you know why, he's, he's been avoided by all these, all these top men in boxing, Leonard, Hearns, none. They don't want to fight him because they know what he's capable of doing. He also knocked out Julian Jackson, the current WBC middleweight champion, in two rounds. Yes. That was uh, in his light middleweight days. A minute to go in this, the fourth round. And that was a good right from Callum Bay, but he was caught on the counter by McCallum as well. McCallum has very good mobility he's not stationary he works from all sides he can punch with either hand and he's, he's really warm to his task now but now he's taking up the pace this is impressive from mccallum and he looks the better of two excellent technicians at the moment 
They are certainly a class act. There they are in the McCallum corner, watching the action, and they must be quite pleased. Coming up towards the bell for the end of the fourth round, McCallum's in charge of it so far. Will it stay that way? Find out in a moment. Welcome back to Monte Carlo, Mike McCallum defending his WBA middleweight title against Sambu Kalambe in the white shorts. Fifth round, and it's due to go 12, remember. So far, McCallum on the scorecards of myself and Michael Watson in front. I found Mike very hard to hit when I'm forward to make the Royal Albert Hall. Now I find it very hard to hit cleanly. He's a very, very good body puncher. You know, he just keeps on top of you, tries to keep on throwing combinations, and he, he gives, you know, he doesn't give you any breathing space. And I felt a little bit disheartened. I caught him my best shots, and there was no effect. He has a very sound chin. As a light middleweight, McCallum really was a very concussive puncher indeed. Uh, how hard does he hit up at middleweight, Michael? He, he's, he's not a devastating puncher. You know, he relies more on his work rate. He's very fit. He always stays on top of you and keeps you working. You know, he doesn't give you any breathing space. You know, he, just, he, he, he denies you room to breathe. And you know, he's just he's just remarkable. He, he keeps inside and he keeps working. That's what he's doing here. There was one notable right uppercut from McCallum. He's really starting to build the pressure on Callum Bay here and how he'd love to stop this Italian-African. There's that uppercut again from McCallum, thrown with great hand speed inside there. Clever, clever punch. He's very, very precise. As I've, as I've said, he never, he never throws a punch unless he knows he's going to connect. Very good mobility. Callum Bay coming back well there, doubling up on the jab. Just took it away, you rise and punch in. Move that fraction away. Both look in great condition, both coming to the scales, just half a pound inside the 11 stone, six pound middleweight limit. Good body punching again there from McCallum. And he really is starting to turn the heat up on Callum Bay at this stage. We're watching two world-class world fighters at their best. So before you look at these guys, and you know, and then you know what you've got to do. You know what you've got to do to, to become champion. You know the way they pace themselves, the way the way they slip and slide. And Callum Bay coming back and scoring with his jab. First of all, upstairs and then down. Beautiful. This is world-class boxing at its best. And the jab again from McCallum. Then again. Then again. Once, twice, three times, ramming into the head of Callum Bay. Break. Step back. I think Colombo is beginning to feel the pressure. I think the pressure is getting to him. Although he scored quite well with his own jab there towards the end of the round. But McCallum will go back to his corner, as Michael was saying, I think still very happy with the way this is working out. He looks sharp and he looks really on the ball for this one. There's Callum Bay. Uh, used to be an electrician in a mine in Zaire, working nearly 6,000 feet underground, and he reckoned that uh, boxing was a good deal safer than that. And there he is taking the jabs of McCallum in that last round. Uh, McCallum was made to mi miss with that right. McCallum's certainly warm to the task now. He's, you know, he's getting in close now, working, working those body punches, and they're connecting very sol solidly. So Callum Bay has the job, really, of how to try to just turn the tide a little bit here. He may have to vary the game plan he came in with. There's a good jabs from Callum Bay. Found the range. Beginning to find the range better with his jab now, yes, Callum Bay. I think he's had some words from his corner man to keep McCallum at a distance. Because the closer they get, you know, the, more, the more effective McCallum is. Everybody's waiting for this guy, McCallum, to suddenly show the signs of his age, 34. Remember, Callum Bay's the same age, mind you. 
I suppose somebody will get lucky with him someday, but I don't think it's going to be just yet. He, he shows no signs that he's on the downhill slope to me. I really don't know what keeps these guys going. You know, you, you look by judging on this performance, you say to yourself, what, what keeps these guys alive? You know, he still looks very fresh. You know, I spoke to him, I learned a lot from Mike McCallum. You know, he's never gone over 12-5 in his preparation. There's Eddie Futch watching in the corner, the uh, great old trainer, and a really, really pleasant man as well. Always got time to speak to you about the fights. And uh, having him in the corner is a big plus as well for McCallum. I think Eddie's approaching his 80th birthday as yes. well. Incredible. Great trainer, Eddie Fudge. He's been with the, the best, best fighters in boxing. Muhammad Ali, Joe Fraser. He's been with them all. And don't forget Archie Moore. Oh, that was a good left hook from Callum, mate. And McCallum took it very well. That's another thing about McCallum. He's got a superb chin as well, hasn't he? And I said to you, Ian, I caught Mike when I fought him. I caught him some really good punches. My best right-hand shots never troubled him at all. I felt very disheartened. Tremendous work rate here from both of these two fighters. Uh, tribute to their conditioning at uh, advancing boxing years, it has to be said. Now I know what they mean by age is only a number. Mm -hmm. Well, if George Foreman can go in at 42, I guess there's hope for us all. Well, it's giving my dad hope. <laughs> Next pro. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder where all this is going to end. We'll have Jersey Joe Walcott back soon, I reckon. Look at this from McCallum. Body shots and that for the head as well. And Callum Bay doesn't want to take too many of those. No, he's really doubling up on his, on his combination punching. That was another good round for McCallum, who's starting to open up a pretty sizable lead over the uh, first half of the fight. I've given him five of the first six rounds, McCallum. Don't know about you, Michael. Yes, I would agree. I think McCallum's really dictating the pace. He's keeping in charge. He's been the governor. And so far, he's, 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 winning, he's winning the fight. Here's some action again. There's Callaway trying to score with the left hook. You can see what a good technical operator McCallum is because he got his glove up to stop it. I think in their first encounter, it was a little bit unfortunate for Mike McCallum coming up from light middleweight to take on Columbay. Now, things have changed now. He's a fully-fledged middleweight, and, you know, he is definitely looking strong. Seventh round into the second half of the contest, and uh, Callumbay has got to try and do something here to turn this around because McCallum has been dominant so far and he starts this round looking a shade more sharp as Callum Bay ramming home that jab a few times good jab as well there are the uh, TV commentators from uh, around the world working at ringside with us is more Callum is more positive with, with the jab and the right cross good Very shot good that right over the top wasn't it Mike very good combination punch I think that's his best asset, his left hand and right, right across the left, the left hand. Switching the attack cleverly there, Callum Bay, one body punch, then one head punch. And McCallum, in this round, is just having probably his worst half a minute of the contest so far. He hasn't landed with much, and Callum Bay's just picked him off quite well. See, the last thing you want to do with Mike McCallum is stand and trade. Columbia's best bet would be to jab and move, make things very awkward. Good right-hand punch there by Columbia. That's the way, jab and move. Use the whole perimeter of the ring, keep on moving. Now Columbia looks rejuvenated in this round. What will McCallum's answer be to this? He usually does find some answer, and quite quickly. McCullum found it very hard in the first encounter to tag, to tag Colombo because he's always moving. Referee John Cole having a little cautionary word there about use of the elbows to McCallum. But Coyle hasn't had to step in too much here. He's let them get on with it and he's a good referee like that. 
very good. And I thought Nigel Ben, he left us to it. And that was uh, one exciting fight. Mike Watson sitting alongside me, coming out on top. I think, I think this part, this round is very, very frustrating for Mike. You know, he's not, he's not finding it so easy this trip. Palumbe looking more mobile in this round. And he's uh, starting to find the range quite well with his jab. And McCallum, who'd had things much his own way for quite a few rounds, is being made to think again here. Mike's only throwing single, single jabs. He should double off on his left hand and get into distance, then blast away with his body punching. He's a little bit out of distance in this round. And again, good cluster of punches from Calambe there on those ribs. There's no doubt this has been his best round of the contest. And Calambe, no question, took that seventh round, I would think, on all scorecards. That's definitely. I think Colombo should feel quite pleased with that performance. You know, he worked behind his left hand very well. Action again from that seventh round. Wasn't that a good right hand from Calambe? That really sent the sweat spraying off the face of McCallum as it landed. Beautiful, beautiful punch. His chin resistance is perfect. Well, you get a lot of elegantly dressed people in a place like Monte Carlo, even at the boxing. <laughs> Lovely stadium. Splendidly appointed. But uh, they won't be noticing that, these two, in the ring. Eighth round, WBA middleweight championship of the world. McCallum in the black trunks defending the title ahead so far, but Callum Bay showing signs in that seventh round that he could still work his way back into it. There you go, man. <laughs> See how easy Colombo's making a fight, you know, when he gets on his bike and jabs the move and doesn't get too involved. I, I can see the strain of Mike McCullough and find it very frustrating. Both of these two have been over the 12 round distance many times indeed, uh, Calambe beat Iran Barkley over 15 on points. Now that shows durability. If you can go 15 with a puncher like Iran Barkley, you're uh, plenty resilient. Yes, Colombo's certainly been tested and he's also certainly been up against the best. Made his name beating Errol Graham. And it was against Barkley that Callum Bay won the WBA title. He also beat uh, the likes of Robbie Sims. He knocked out Doug DeWitt in, seventh in the seventh round and got stripped of the title for agreeing to the fight with Michael Nunn, the IBF champion. The fight he lost, as I was telling you earlier, in 88 seconds. His wife watches on anxiously, now with a little bit of a smile playing by her lips, because Callum Bay starting to do a bit better. Calumbay's jab now is noticeably finding its target more often. That's another good body shot from McCallum, followed by that right cross again to the side of the head from Calumbay. I'm surprised that uh, McCallum hasn't hit below the belt. He's got a tendency sometimes when he's throwing his body shots to hit too far under the, uh, under the belt. Is McCallum just starting to tire a little? I think he's more frustrated more than anything else. He's finding it very hard to tag Colombe. There you go, there you go. You don't like that. This is similar to the first encounter they had back in Italy. Both landing with some pretty good punches in this, the eighth round. Colombe on the ropes, but he's often dangerous there, like that, with the left hook, good shot. Colombe has come to life in the last couple of rounds. He's stunning home the jab now. He's making McCullum miss a good deal more as well. He's making things very difficult for McCullum with that left hand. So, interesting fight here. Rejoin us in a moment.
welcome back to the start Louis the second in Monte Carlo and this fight gets ever more intriguing Mike McCallum in the black shorts on the right of your picture defending his WBA middleweight title against the Italian African Sambu Calambe and in the last couple of rounds Calambe has shown real signs of starting to get a foothold back into this fight after uh, McCallum had much the best of the opening half of the contest McCallum has to start stepping up the paces giving Colombe too much leverage you know, too much room is to start cutting the ring down and getting more involved in those body punches keep on top of them that's the way it's the ninth round we're into the home stretch of it eddie futch there in the corner great strategist i wonder what he's making of this now he must uh, see that callum bay has started to come back and that's another good left ram through the guard of mccallum and then the jab, once, twice, from Callum Bay. What a comeback this is from him in the last three rounds. Can he keep this up? If he can keep this going right through these last few rounds, it could become quite close. But uh, McCallum may have other ideas. Callum Bay's stepping up the pace. You know, he's connecting solidly with those left and right hands. And he's doubling up and hooking with those left hands perfectly. Switching from head and body. Another beautiful left hook by Colombe. Colombe has been around at uh, a pretty high level for quite a time. It was back in uh, 1982 that he beat a fighter as good as Buster Drayton. Oh, look at that right again from Colombe. Because it's dispiriting, as you've been saying, Michael, hitting a guy like McCallum, because it's uh, it's like hitting a mountainside, really, isn't it? Nothing happens. He's, he's, you know, his punch resistance, it's, you know, his chin is so, so strong. You know, I hit him with some really good shots, and he didn't trouble him in the least. Mind you, by and large, you can say the same thing about Callum Bay. He takes a shot well as Very well. As well. Um, I was a bit surprised that Mike Nunn put him away in, in so quickly in the first round. Well, it's very hard to judge a man by that, by that performance. You know, it's the first round. He wasn't warm. And personally, I, I think Nunn caught Columbia, you know, cold, very cold. A good chopping right there from McCallum. This is better from him, getting his body shot in again as well. That right into the ribcage, then a good right over the top. McCallum starting to rally a little. This is a good fight now. They're certainly going toe to toe now. Columbia is falling right into the trap. That's what Mike McCullum wants, for Columbia to stop running and stand toes to toes so he can throw his body punches. This is no blood and thunder war, but in terms of technical skill and quality, this is a very, very fine fight indeed. This is two great technicians at their best. You know, now you see the beauty of boxing, how to slip a punch, how to take a punch, and ride a punch, beautiful. Hope you're appreciating it at home as much as we are here in Monte Carlo. There's McCallum having to take a left, coming back. Callum Bay just missing there with the jab and then scoring with it, rocking McCallum's head back on his shoulders. More action again from the last round, and that's that good right over the top, this time from Mike McCallum. Not a lot in the rounds, but uh, the definite impression that Callum Bay is coming back and starting to eat into McCallum's lead all the time. What do you think, Mike? I still put I put Mike McCallum two rounds two rounds in front. Columbia's coming up very slowly. Both 34 years of age, remember. Between them, though, they had 96 fights. These two, and between them, they've only lost five of them. You know, you, you, we're, we're looking at two, two great boxers. You know, they've been tested. And then these are two, two fighters that are well avoided by, by boxing's best. Beautiful body shot by Colombo. That's the uh, Italian's corner. Ennio Galliazzi in there. Mike cannot afford to start slipping. He's got to get in there and 
Beautiful left hook there. He's got us down top now. Trading punch for punch in this round really is fascinating. I don't think Colombo is beginning to like those body shots that he's receiving from Mike McCallum. They're beginning to take its toll. But he's working beautifully behind those left hands. Slipping punches too, very cleverly at close range, Callum Bay too. The very good craftsman. Look at that, did it there, you see. McCallum poked out the jab, Callum Bay just slipped inside it and came back with the counter. That's uh, lovely boxing skills. This is the same problem Mike McCallum had with Callum Bay in the first, the first fight. He, you know, he gave Callum Bay the chance to dance around and use his left hand and nick shots. He doesn't want to do that in this fight. He's got to get in there close and dictate the pace work his body shots because that's where it matters most there's no doubt about it Callum Bay has proved in this fight that he is still a world-class operator there was that little question mark against him after the Nun defeat he still has a lot of ambition and he's showing a lot down the stretch look at the way he's slipping those punches from McCallum quite brilliant from Callum Bay some of this in this round and then poking at his jab again He's almost playing McCallum at his own game a bit. This fight is certainly a classic. And McCallum does score with the body shots this time. Callum Bay is quite happy, unlike a lot of fighters, on the ropes like that, where he can suck you in and counter punch. Yes. Colombo has a habit of going on the ropes and drawing his opponents into the counters. Well, how do you score a round like that last one? A lot of pressure from McCallum, but superb defensive skills from Callum Bay and some very good counter-punching. Yes, they both suddenly gave it 100%. I would make that round very easy. What do you think here now? Let's have a look at the close quarter action there. McCallum, look how he's made to miss by Callum Bay. Then the body shot from Callum Bay. They both throwed a lot of punches, but really connected. I'd make that round very even. 11th round coming up, just two to go. The WBA's middleweight championship on the line. Other versions of this title, by the way, the WBC version held by Julian Jackson, who beat Harold Graham for it. Uh, Michael Nunn, the IBF champion. Chris Eubank holding the WBO version. And the man sitting alongside me, Michael Watson, looking to gate crash and get his name on that scroll of honor pretty soon. Yes, I certainly will. Looking at these two fighters, I'm, I know what I've got to do to become champion. World undisputed middleweight champion. Rosa Calambe getting ever more animated at ringside. Calambe again scores well with his left jab. Mice just poking that left hand now. He should double up more on his left hand, find his distance and throw more of those body shots. So that's, the, that's the main asset, is to weaken the body. Well, if Callum Bay had fought in the first half of the contest, as well as he's done in the second half, I think he'd be well on his way to uh, regaining this championship here. As it is, it's close, but I still have McCallum in front by an ever-decreasing margin. Yes, I think Colombo should have dictated the pace from the first round, but unfortunately he left it a little bit too late. But we've still got a way, way ahead to go. Callum Bay doing a little less in this round. And Callum, although he's perhaps just dropped down a gear in the second half of the contest, still working away, still relentlessly coming forward. Good body shots from him in that exchange. Colombo's really working beautifully behind that left hand. Also throwing good body shots, countering very well. Making things very awkward for Mike McCallum. There you go again, a good double left, left hand again by Colombo. Ian, I think Mike is beginning to feel the strain now. not looking as effective as effective as he was in, in the earlier stages good jabs though 
from McCallum. Still trying to bounce around on his feet. That's a good body shot back though from Callum Bay that time. Then the right to the head and uh, McCallum being made to miss. He just doesn't look quite so organised, quite so together as he did in those early rounds when he was so dominant. Callum Bay's round, I think. Yes, I think so as well. He, he, Columbo used his left hand very well, caught McCallum with blind and right hands and, you know, he's really taken control. Well, I'm just looking through my scorecard as we watch back. That was a good right from McCallum. Callum Bay ducking down low to avoid the following punches and now have a look at this little exchange. McCallum's made to miss. So too is Callum Bay. You saw really there the defensive skills of the pair of them as they come up now for the 12th and final round. They touch gloves. There's none of that nonsense we had with Hector Camacho the other week in America. These are two experienced old pros with the utmost respect for one another. McCallum in the black shorts. Callum Bay in the white, remember. And the crowd thoroughly enjoying this as we are here at ringside. The middleweight title on the line. Can Callum Bay reclaim it? On my scorecard now, I have McCallum. I don't know about you, Mike. Uh, I've got him just one round ahead going into the last round. On my scorecard, I've got the same as well. I think this, this round will be a major factor for both fighters. So whoever's got the most will to win now. It's all down to this round. Both tremendously conditioned. The pace, the skills still on view right into this final stretch of the fight. It's a fearsome looking right to the body from Callum Bay in there. I don't know whether it got through those uh, elbows out down low of McCallum's. If it did, it will have hurt. And that left hook, which might have hit the glove of McCallum. Yes, Callum Bay is looking very strong. He's giving it his all. It's all down to this round. He's slipping well, sliding, doubling up in his left hands. He's making, making things very hard for McCallum. Fascinating to know how the judges from Panama, Venezuela and Spain are seeing this. Oh, was that a slip? That was a slip. Just a slip, no count. Otherwise, it would have been, I think, decisive on the scorecards. The two of them throwing in everything here, knowing that this last round could be decisive. It's tight, it must be tight on the scorecards. Very, very, very close. Bay has come back terrifically in the second half of the fight. My own impression is that McCallum dominated the early rounds rather more emphatically than Callum Bay has had the better of the second half of it. Most definitely. Callum has left it a little bit too late. It would have dictated the pace from the first round going upwards. Um, I think he would have won the fight hands down. He's come on tremendously well. You know, he's paced himself very well and both of them is going at their task. Remarkably well. At this age, they won't want many more as rigorous and demanding as this one as we get the countdown now to the final bell. This is going to go to the judges' scorecards. What a terrific fight that was. Technically, crowd are on their feet in the Stade Louis II Stadium here in Monte Carlo. They've seen an excellent fight. The two of them have raised their hands aloft, but the truth is they will have to wait anxiously for the decision of the three judges. That was the slip. It was a slip by uh, Callum Bay and referee John Coyle, good ref, saw it exactly as that. Mike Watson, who do you think's won? It was a very tight fight, but on my scorecard, I think Mike McCallum won. So here are the announcements in French. I'll try to translate for you. Callum Bay, Salkins. Callum Bay on the first judge, 115 to 114. Fernando Rizzo. Macalou, 116, Calambay, 114.
but Callum wins it on the second judge's scorecards, 116 to 140, and it depends on this one. McCallum has won it on a split decision, 116 to 114 on that final card. Very tight fight, very little in it as we thought, but what it means is that Mike McCallum is still the WBA middleweight champion. What a great effort from Sambu Kalambe there. He came so close, but McCallum wipes out the only defeat on his record after a terrific fight here. Et de tes formidable combat.